Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Manick and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And in this Science to Practice overview, we're going to get into nutrition for injury. Now, to give you some background on this topic, exercise-induced injuries is very common, um, not just in professional elite athletes, but also in recreational level athletes. And of those injuries, um, at least half of them can be considered severe, leading on average to over three weeks without training or competition. So it's very serious stuff for a lot of people. What's exciting for us in the field of sport and exercise nutrition is that the evidence suggests that paying special attention to your nutrition, to your diet, whilst injured, uh, may actually be able to support the process of wound healing and return your athletes back to play, back to competition, um, people back into the gym. Now, there is a lot of information out there. There are a lot of opinions, a lot of thoughts. There's even some research, but not all of it is translatable or relevant to the real world. So what we're going to do is look at this research um, review paper by Professor Kevin Tipton, Nutritional Support for Exercise Induced Injuries. You can get this on online easily, just uh, Google it, it's open access. And when we read the review and look at the evidence, what we know is the most important factor we need to bear in mind is that energy balance is critical. And what that means is that we need to avoid a severe energy restriction, avoid severe calorie deficits. And there's two reasons why this is the case. Number one is that this will slow down the wound healing process. And two, it will exacerbate or speed up muscle loss, neither of which are going to help this situation. And if you listen to my podcast, you'll hear me say, um, we don't just eat energy. We don't just eat macros. We don't just eat calories. What we do is, is we eat food. So when we are looking to implement this into the real world, we need to take a food first approach to our sport and exercise nutrition considerations with our clients, with our teams, with our athletes. So what that means is that we need to be looking at a balanced diet well before a sports nutrition intervention and well before um, supplements. And the reason for this is very simple is that because what we know is that a well-balanced diet based on a minimally processed diet, a whole foods approach to our diet is likely to avoid any macro or micro deficiencies, which have been shown to be important for the recovery process. And although I said that we don't eat macros, we eat food, of course, many foods can be rich in certain macronutrients and in particular um, protein rich foods are of particular interest in this situation because insufficient protein intakes may impede wound healing and increase inflammation so in order to deal with that we need to consider um, ensuring our intake is at least two grams per kilogram of body mass which may help this situation and specifically, this may help because it will help to retain lean tissue mass, increase wound healing and reduce inflammation. Now, although the total amount of protein per day is the most important factor, along with energy balance, it may also be that achieving an optimal impact with this would be to distribute protein intake evenly across the day say 20 to 40 grams every three to four waking hours is what recent research is now suggesting and also that adding leucine may also be beneficial particularly in a reduced energy and reduced protein intake scenario and i would also add to that a plant-based or vegan type diet but we must always bear in mind that the bulk of this information is preliminary on this topic, which means that we don't really know what the impact of um, extra leucine, super physiological levels or superfood uh, levels of leucine would have on the wound healing process. We just don't know. So caution, like with many things in life, more is not always better. Now, we said food is your biggest priority, but there are possibly two supplements in particular that may have some promise here, one of which is creatine monohydrate, which when used correctly may help to retain lean tissue mass and maintain muscle strength. 
And the other is omega-3 fatty acids may also help reduce inflammation in muscle loss. But we need to be careful because this information is preliminary once again. And in fact, in some situations, higher intakes of certain supplements like essential fatty acids could negatively impact the wound healing process. So caution is warranted and therefore their use should be considered on an individual basis and most definitely considered by an appropriately qualified and educated individual. So what are the take home messages on this topic? Well, firstly, there is still much to be learned about the best nutritional strategy to enhance recovery from exercise induced injuries. Deficiencies, particularly those of energy, protein and micronutrients must be avoided. Careful consideration of each athlete's situation is crucial. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the best recommendation is first do no harm, um, which really means that we need to con consider the need, consider the risk and consider the consequences. As, uh, and as I discuss in my podcast on a regular basis, it's one of those cost to benefit decision making scenarios. You can, but should you? So. In terms of uh, further reading on this topic, I take you back to the review paper we've been discussing, which is Nutritional Support for Exercise Induced Injuries. Please uh, just Google that with Professor Kevin Tipton as the author, and you'll easily find that as an open access paper. But I also recommend you consider listening to the podcast I did with Professor Tipton, all about this very topic for about an hour, where we take a very deep dive into this topic. I also suggest that you may consider some of our other podcasts on uh, related topics and some other uh, resources that we um, make available. But in particular, if you want to become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition, then do consider our online diploma program in performance nutrition, which is an advanced training program for current and aspiring sport and exercise nutritionists. So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening. I am Laurel Bannock and do come check us out at theiopn.com and of course on social media at theiopn. Take care.